There are some uh, big enthusiasts um, you come across to uh, big enthusiasts of Gambit openings. Gambit openings, well, let me tell you something. There is no opening in chess, modern chess theory, that starts with or oh, and where well, that has word gambit in it is entirely sound. There is a king's gambit. Well, queen's gambit is the only exception because this queen's gambit accepted or declined. It's not really a gambit when one side gives a pawn and gets it back two moves later. But real gambits are the gambits where you give up a pawn and you don't expect don't expect to get it back. So one of those gambits, and I want to talk about now, is a blackmar dimmer gambit. blackmar dimmer gambit is, well, starts with moves, um, well, it can start with any move. It can start with move e4 or d4. And well, for example, after e4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, it started like Alekhine, and after d4, we turned, it turns into a black Mardimer gambit. So, but normally black Mardimer gambit starts with moves d4, knight f6, knight c3. Now white wants to play e4, and after d5, they play e4. You see, we got the same position as we started. We can start with, uh, uh, you know, Alekhine defense. Or anyway, after e4. There are number of continuations for black here. Main move is DE, but simple move. If you want to do it, this gambit is not sound. Now, the simple way to get some, even not just equalize, but to get some advantage even for black, the simple way that you can learn real quick is knight takes E4. Now, knight takes E4, D takes E, and black is a pawn up. Now, what can we say about this position? Is there an immediate way? Is there a way where white can immediately get their pawn back? No, there isn't. Now, does white have enough development advantage of enough of any kind of advantage to justify a loss of a central pawn? Absolutely not. There are two ways to play for white here. One way is to go f3, and the other way is to go bishop e3. f3 is the main move. That's how white would probably play if they play this opening against you. But however, let's look at bishop e3, bishop f5. We're going to go in after knight e2, e6, and knight g3. We can go simply bishop g6. We're not going to give them back pawn. So h4, h5. And on bishop e2, we simply go knight to d7. And you see, seems like white has enough pressure on h5 pawn to take it and to win this pawn. But it's not so. After bishop takes h5, bishop takes h5. And knight takes h5. White can, black can simply go g6, knight g3, and rook takes h4, and black is still up a pawn. Well, I don't think you're going to see uh, anyone playing you in this position. Um, bishop e3 move. So the main move is f3. So let's continue with f3. We go bishop f5. Now, probably c3. What can white, well, of course black could have taken, but we don't want to develop white's pieces after ef. We don't want to help white to develop, no. We're going to develop our piece, and also we maintain the extra pawn. If white goes c3, for example, we go e6, bishop e3, and white is waiting when black is going to take on f3 to develop the knight with the tempo. Now we can go bishop e7. After f e, bishop takes e4, queen g4. I'm just giving you the um, game that was played 
uh, uh, the relatively good player played with black, and he got an advantage. Bishop g6, I'm just quoting you, there is no theory develop, developed in this variation. So I'm just saying a simple way for black to get a better position, knight d7, uh, and uh, if now if knight d2, knight f6, white has absolutely nothing for uh, a pawn. White has no initiative, and they have, well, knight d2 was not necessary, of course, but then if white goes bishop e2, then we go knight f6, queen g3, knight e4, and queen is very uncomfortable. And we are, we having central position, even after knight d5, we having central position, we having an extra pawn, and there, there's nothing white has that we don't have, and white is a central pawn down. This is totally unsound opening, and you shouldn't waste much time studying it. You should just learn one line, the one I just showed you, and you're ready to crush this opening. That's a very convincing play to play against this opening. Again, quickly, d4, d4, d, d5, well, well, it depends on what opening do you play, you, whether you play d5 for black or knight f6, or you can start with knight f6, and after, after knight c3 you go d5, and e4, again, knight takes e4. Simple, very easy way to get an advantage against totally unsound black Mardimar gambit. That's all you have to know about it. Bird's opening, bird opening is very interesting opening in uh, the type of opening. This is a type of opening that reminds you like a Dutch defense for black with extra tempo if you play white. But who plays the bird's opening? People who d try to kill two birds. They try to get unusual type of position where they don't have to study much theory and where they get good possibilities of attack. It's, a, it's an opening for lazy and, and at the same time ambitious players. So it's a rather rare combination and if you are lazy how can you be ambitious? It's almost, uh, almost a contradiction of facts but they are players. They are lazy to study theory and they are very ambitious to perform some kind of attack. So let's talk about f4, uh, the bird opening. Best and obvious move to play for black is d5 and after knight f3, g6. Now, let me explain why I want to play g6 in so early stage of the game. The reason I want to play g6 is because if white plays bird defense, bird uh, opening, I want to make sure they go with d3 or d4. I want to make sure they don't play, if, suppose if we played knight f6 on second move, they don't have an option to fianchetto their bishop on b2 where it would stand, where it would stand well and then play e3. So by playing second move g6, we eliminate the b3 possibility. Now b3 is totally pointless because bishop g7 and uh, whatever white does, if they do d4, they block this diagonal. If they do knight c3, knight doesn't stand well on c3 and can be, uh, and, and it's subject to get attacked. So obviously white should stick to e3 move. Another option for white in this position, e3 is the main move, but g3. So if they play so-called Leningrad variation of Dutch, well, that's something black plays with extra tempo. After g3, I would recommend to go bishop g2, uh, bishop g7, bishop g2, knight f6, and if both sides castle and white goes d3, then black can simply play b6. 
That's what I would recommend. No c5. We play b6 and we wait for white to go e4. On knight c3, we go bishop b7. And if white goes knight e5, we go knight b to d7. Knight takes d7, queen takes d7. This is very good position for white. If white for black, sorry, for black, and if white plays e4, and after d takes c and d takes c, and black plays simply rook fd8, and you can tell black has an advantage here. For, for instance, if queen takes d1, we would like to take with a knight on d, uh, d queen takes d7, knight takes d7, maybe knight goes to c5. Well, this is strictly positional concept. Now, what black would want to do is to play bishop takes c3. You see, when you fianchetta bishop on g7, you don't normally want to give it back for the knight because you weaken your pawn, uh, pawn uh, uh, you weaken your king position. So, based on the pawn structure, but this is an end game. And if black goes now knight c5, black has a big advantage in the opening in a pawn structure. So, this position is after knight takes d7, where white is forced to play e5 practically. We can take on g2, and black is at least equal. They can even go f6 here. And they will be fine. E takes F, E takes F, followed by F5. White has absolutely no advantage. So this is the way I would recommend to play if white tries to fianchetto their bishop. Um, but if not, then we're going to get position after F4, D5, and we get knight f3, g6, then white will go e3. And on f3, after e3, bishop g7, then, well, white has two ways to play. Either they can go d3 or they can go d4. So if they go d3, so they, this way, they still uh, may play e4 later in the game. And that's what they are hoping for. If they go d3, then we go knight to h6. I like knight on h6 because knight may possibly go to um, f5. Bishop e2, black castles, white castles, and black goes b6. You see, black simply wants to play bishop b7, and knight is going to go to f5 later. After e4, Black also get, is getting an advantage here. D takes E, D takes E. Now Black exchanges queens. Rook takes D1, Bishop B7, and after E5, Knight A6. Now you can see why Black is better. White, first of all, White is overextended in the center, and Black has very strongly placed, very well placed minor pieces. Knight may go to b4 or c5. The other knight goes to f5. Bishop on g7 is relatively passive, but can be quickly brought back into the game by playing f6 and opening this h8, a1 diagonal. So this position is definitely good position for black. So let's go back now to the um, most expected continuation, in my opinion most expected. Overall birds opening is not a popular opening, so f4, d5, knight f3, g6, e3, bishop, g7, d4 probably, that's so-called stonewall system in Dutch defense played with extra tempo for white. But notice this is not acceptable for white because if black plays it, black wants to get some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of a stable position and uh, uh, where white does not have easy breakthroughs. But here 
you cannot play this type of position which is totally closed position just because you have an extra tempo because extra tempo as we know in closed positions are totally irrelevant not totally almost irrelevant so after d4 after d4 we can go simply knight h6 now on bishop e2 we just castle and if white castles we go knight f5 and here is the plan for black you see the weak square on e4 that's where knight wants to get so we're gonna go knight d6 and possibly get on e4 and the other knight is gonna go from b8 to d7 f6 and also control the e4 square e4 square is the key of whole position meanwhile white does not have e5 square because if they put some piece on e5 like knight black can always play f6 and kick it out so after knight f5 c3 we go knight d6 and on b3 we go knight d7 our knight heading to f6 and e4 and uh, after we go knight d7 knight e5 knight f6 and after h3 we go knight f to e4 see we put one knight on e4 we put the f knight on e4 this is very important because we are intending to kick the knight by white's knight by playing f6 now after we played knight f to e4 queen e1 suppose white wants to play queen h4 now we can go c5 try to open position in the center when we have uh, uh, superiority in the center we have very good knight on e4 and after bishop a3 we play c takes d um, now if c takes d black simply goes f6 and after knight d3 bishop f5 black has great position and if white tries something different like bishop takes d6 in this position uh, bishop takes d6 then e takes d6 and after knight f3 d takes c this is just winning for black so what white has to do now they have to take on d4 and now after bishop f5 black simply has good good size advantage i think they have very well placed knight on e4 they can always kick black's knight and they have the c file this is an easy way to play and again we did not really exhaust every possibility and every variation here but this is the plan when you play against the openings that are passive for white and this is relatively passive in early stage all you need is a good plan and you know how to develop your pieces and if you do that you're going to do very well in the bird opening and also in any opening that it does not have good healthy positional idea behind it call system is definitely belongs to the category of the openings where white uh, does not need to know much or be prepared real well they have to know one basic idea and a strategy and they can play it obviously if you do it this way if you base your opening choice choice of your opening ba is based on uh, uh, you know getting through the opening easy way you cannot count on any kind of advantage so after d4 knight f6 knight f3 e6 e3 c5 white plays bishop d3 and white's idea here is to play bishop d3 c3 and knight d2 of course it can be done in any different move order in different move order so we just pick random move order that white can play you should not get confused if white cho chooses slightly different move order so after bishop d3 we go d5 white goes c3 we go bishop e7 white goes castle on knight d2 it doesn't matter knight d2 castle white castles and b6 now b6 is very interesting move it looks like 
black wants to play bishop b7. But black also wants to play bishop e a6. Bishop a6 trying to exchange white's good bishop. You see white has good bishop on d3 and white has bad bishop on c1. So black tries to exchange white's good bishop by playing bishop a6. And if white prevents what the, which what they should do by playing queen e2, then we're simply developing bishop to b7. And after queen e2, bishop b7, um, uh, well, what uh, black should do here? Now, what's black's plan here? Uh, the, the best plan for queen e2, bishop b7, what, what, for white, is to take and go e4. This is the, actually the main idea of whole opening. White takes on c5, black takes, and go e4. Of course, white can also try to play knight e5, but then if white plays knight e5, even move b4, we could go bishop b7 and after f4, we can also play bishop a6, but bishop a6, white can take and go knight c6, which is also okay for black after queen d7, but if we choose to play bishop b7 and after f4, so-called stone wall, we can go knight to e4 and knight takes e4, d, e, black has very fine position after bishop c2, f6, and after knight g4, simply bishop d5 to stop bishop b3. Black is doing very well, so very knight c6 next move, followed by f5. Black has absolutely no problem. So that's why we stick to queen e2 move, and uh, after bishop b7, white plays d takes c, b takes c, and e4. Okay, we play knight c6 here. Just simply, simple developing move. And uh, e5 is the move to expect from white. If white plays something like rook e1, we go queen c7 and e5, knight d7. It's almost the same thing. So e5, knight goes to d7, and white goes rook e1, black goes rook e8. Now, the purpose of rook e8 move, so sometimes if white conducts attack, on a king side, we can play knight to f8. Black has good control of a center uh, with a d5 and c5 pawn, so therefore black is doing real well. After knight f1, knight f8, and on bishop f4, black simply tries to ex expand on the queen side. And also, maybe they want to play queen b6 and bishop a6, as we already mentioned, the, to exchange the uh, light square bishop. So a5 is a good move, and after rook a to d1, we go a4. Well, white does not have any good way to make any progress on a king side. So what I would think they should do is c4. Actually, this I'm just quoting you game between two good players. And after c4, let me tell you what happened. Black went knight d4, knight takes d4, c takes d4, and knight g3, now d takes c4. Now, this position is already better for black. The reason why after bishop takes c4, black goes knight g6, and after bishop c1, black goes queen to b6. You see, d4 pawn is a good pawn. It's not a weak pawn. Can be protected with the e rook, rook a d8. Rook goes to c8, and which we're going to see now in a few moves, black is going to have an advantage. After bishop d3, rook e to d8. Obviously, you don't want to put rook a to d8, since rook on e8 will be passive. Rook e to d8. And uh, this position, after, you know, maybe, maybe rook f1, white plays, trying to go f4. 
And uh, if we simply go bishop d5, attacking a2 pawn, and after a3, bishop b3, and rook on d2, e1, rook c8. Well, just look at the position. Uh, black's pieces stand much, much better than white's pieces. Now, f4 is not that good of a move because black can play bishop c2, and after bishop takes c2, d3 check will give black a winning position. What else can white do? Uh, black is um, very safe, and they have very good views, very good views on a queen side, and they simply have, I think, sizable advantage. So position is simply not good for white. Of course, this is far from being the fourth continuation for white, but when y they play call system against you, again, once more I want to outline that what they want to do, they want to play very quiet opening with a possibility op to open position in a later stage. Again, bishop d3, d5, castle, bishop e7, c3, castles, and knight d2. Only plan black has, and only plan there is in call system, is to take on c5 at some point and go e4. So that's what we're preparing for uh, by playing b6, and after queen e2, bishop b7, that's how we got into this position, dc, bc, e4, and knight c6. So position is 100% reliable for black. Black has no problems, totally equalized at least. And uh, white for white, I wouldn't recommend anyone to play this opening. English opening. There are various different ways to play against it. C4. So we already, on previous DVDs, I covered brief, I gave brief introduction to the E5 system, and I just outlined in a couple of minutes uh, what is the plan for black here. But the other way to play against the English opening is C5. It's a more competitive way to play against it. More competitive when you're trying to get most out of this opening. So you're challenging white to the opening knowledge, to the knowledge of this opening. So c4, c5, well, suppose white plays knight c3, and we play knight f6, and after knight f3, we play g6. Now, let me tell you a few things about this position. Why do we play on a second move knight f6 and then g6, and not knight c6, and after knight f3 followed by g6? This would be wrong position. It's hard to imagine that position like we have right now on the board is not pleasant for black. Actually, it may even be a bad position because white has e3 move. And now after d4, black does not have enough time to meet good with a counterplay in the center because white is trying to get d4, go d5 with the tempo attacking black knight on, a, uh, on c6. Let's see, for example, if black goes knight f6, white goes d4, and after c takes d, e takes d, and d5, this position is not that good for, um, for black, because white goes c takes d, knight takes d5, and queen b3. And position that looks uh, seemingly like normal position is not very good for black. 
black has choice is either play knight takes c3 or knight b6. After knight b6, d5, they are very uncomfortable with knight on c6. And if knight takes c3, white plays very white plays very strong <coughs> in between move bishop c4 and black is in uh, uh, trouble. The reason why f7 pawn is hanging and black can do, must play either e6 or knight d5, bishop takes d5 and then e6. In both ways white has an advantage. Let's run quickly Let's go quickly through these variations. For example, if knight d5, bishop takes d5 and e6, white plays bishop takes c6, check, pawn takes, and white castles. Bishop on c8 is not very good piece now for, uh, for black. Bishop on c8 is really passive. Bishop g7, then bishop f4 and followed by rook c1 white will have an advantage here so and if black does not play knight d5 then in this case they have to play after bishop c4 e6 and after b takes c black is having problems again if they go bishop g7 then white plays bishop a3 and if they go bishop e7, white plays bishop h6. In both cases, black is seemingly uncomfortable. So that's why it's important now we are looking for more competitive way to play in the opening. That's why it's important that after c4, c5, knight c3, we choose the correct move order. The correct move order is knight f6 and knight after knight f3, g6. Now, here uh, white has two ways to play. White has to determine what plan they want to play. <clears throat> they can go d4 where they get some superiority in the center and they can play g3 simply uh, con uh, con G not the G3, but E3. G3 will lead to the same D4 variation. After Bishop G7, Bishop G2, and Castle, White will play D4, which will transpose to the variation we are about to analyze. So White has practically two plans, to play D4 uh, or to play E3, followed by D4. Let's look at d4 variation. Uh, after g6, black played g6, d4, c takes d, knight takes d4, and black plays knight c6. Now here, white can go with g3 or with e4. After e4, we get 100% transposition to regular Marozzi bind position of accelerated dragon, which is the part of our repertoire if you are following to my advices. So then E4 we are not going to analyze here because it's already fully covered in our accelerated uh, dragon Marozzi bind. So we look at G3 variation, bishop G7, bishop G2, black castles, and white castles. Now, this is typical and critical position of uh, this variation of English defense. So there is a pawn sacrifice idea, d6, which is insufficient and not recommended to play for black since after bishop takes c6, b takes c, knight takes c6, and if black plays queen c7, then knight d5 is very strong, and white has an advantage. So we, I don't recommend to play this pawn sacrifice because it's unsound. So the move, we want to play knight takes d4, 
queen takes d4 and d6. Here is the position. Here is the basic position of uh, this variation. The best move for white and the most popular move in this position is queen d3. So white wants to play maybe bishop e3 and bishop d4, or uh, the, maybe they want to play b3 and bishop b2. Black is not threatening to move their knight somewhere and attack white's king on d4. So white plays queen d3 just to prepare bishop e3. There is no need for queen d3, but white does that you know, because they want to um, play bishop e3. That's why, not because black has some kind of threat. Now, there is also other moves. There are also other moves. For example, there is a queen h4 move. There is queen h4 move in this position with the idea to play bishop h6. That's not a dangerous move. And uh, what black should do, simply play queen b6. Now, bishop h6 is not good since b2 pawn is hanging. So if white plays b3 here, then black goes bishop d7, and after bishop h6, bishop to c6, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and after e4, that was played already in the tournament games, black plays a5, and after rook a to b1, or knight d5. But in, in, in both cases, black has a good position. After rook a to b1, black can play a4 with the idea of taking a, b, a, b, and playing rook a3. And if white plays b takes a, then after queen c5, all white pawns are weak. Or if black plays knight d5, Instead, then bishop takes d5, e takes d, and black plays a4. You see that queen on h4 is totally out of play. And white's, white's position on queen side may collapse at any time. So this is good position for white, and therefore for black, therefore queen h4 uh, is not a good move and it's not something white plays often. It's been played uh, once in a while, but it's a person who knows well how to play those positions. They would never play queen h4. So queen to d3 is the main continuation here. And after queen to d3, we play a6. Now this is a good move, and the idea of a6 move is to prepare b5. Obviously, we cannot go b5 right away because our rook is hanging. So, but the idea uh, the idea is to play rook b8 and possibly b5. So, what should white do here? White can play bishop to e3 and uh, to try to play possibly rook d1, rook c1, and c5. You see how there are two bishops aiming on queen side and rooks are placed in the center. This is the best coordination white can dream of. So, but, so we have to be careful how we conduct our action in this position. After bishop to e3, we play knight g4. Well, white has to follow their plan, bishop d4, and we go knight e5. Uh, white has, if white takes, plays bishop takes e5, obviously they cannot get any advantage because black has now two bishops, very strong dark square bishop, and then they're going to go rook b8, bishop e6. They have no problems, and they are very, very comfortable. So queen has to move, and queen has to move to d1. That's the only square. 
They cannot go queen d2 because knight takes c4, attacks the queen. So queen goes to d1, and obviously we cannot play knight takes c4, since white wins after bishop takes g7, king takes g7, queen d4 check, knight e5, and f4, winning a piece. Of course, we cannot do this. So, uh, what we play after, in this position, after we played on, on bishop e3, after we played knight g4, bishop d4, and knight e5, queen d1. So, here, after rook b8, white can play here rook c1, and we can play bishop to e6. And after b3, we can go b5, and we have no problems. Black is okay here. So bishop e3 may not be the best idea for uh, white here. Um, well, suppose they play simply bishop to d2. Now, after bishop to d2, we want to play bishop f5. The idea of bishop f5 to force uh, white to play e4. Now, white plays e4, and now we go bishop to e6. And black wants to play knight d7 and get the counterplay on white's c4 pawn. So, uh, the, the way game can continue is this. Uh, after e4, and we went bishop e6, now white has to play either rook c1 or knight d5. So that, But they first want to play b3, make sure that the pawn on b2 is not going to be hanging. Also protects the c4 pawn. It's a, it's a good move. Knight d7. Now we want to uh, bring knight to e5 or c5 with um, some activity. Now, after rook a to c1, we play knight c5. And if after queen e3, we can go b5. This, that's what black wanted. Black wanted to get b5 in and have active play on the queen side. c takes b, a takes b, and rook c2. Now, if knight takes b5, obviously we play rook takes a2, and we have great position. So if black plays rook c2, then white goes queen to d, white goes rook c2, black goes queen to d7, and after rook f to c1, we simply play b4, and after knight d5, uh, white has absolutely no advantage because bishop takes d5, e takes d, and rook f to b8. Let's talk about this position for a second. Uh, black has a better pawn structure because they have one pawn on a queen side holding two a2 and b3 pawns. So black also has powerful knight on c5. I would say black is at least equal, maybe a little more than that. Black has no problems, that is for sure. Now, that will approximately, that's, that will about conclude our analysis of this variation of D4 um, uh, variation of English, where we get positions very similar to accelerated dragon Marozzi bind. So we're talking about c4, c5, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, g6, d4. cd, knight takes d4, and knight c6. We, more or less, we covered, I gave you the basic ideas, couple of main variations, what we're playing for, and basically that's all you, ha all you need to know to get reasonable position in uh, this variation of English opening. Now we're gonna go and uh, look 
in the variation of English, where white does not fianchetto the bishop on g3 and does not play d4 right away, which is c4, c5, knight c3, or knight f3, it doesn't matter which order black devel white develops the knight, knight f3, g6, and if they play e3. Now this is the variation we will cover now. White practically has to play d4 here, since that's why they played e3. And after d4, black has a couple of ways to play. First of all, they can castle here. And second, they can play c takes d. So I want to stick to c takes d variation. We have choices, but I uh, let me make this choice for you and advise you the move that gives black clear and satisfactory position. After c takes d and e takes d, obviously knight takes d4 makes no sense at all, since why did white play e3 then? e takes d and d5. Well, here white can play simply bishop e2, or queen b3, or bishop to g5. Now, they can also play c takes d. Those are the variations white has here. Well, let's go with the simplest one. c takes d, knight takes d5, and after bishop c4, we can play simply knight b6, and you do have a good position here, because after bishop b3, we just castle, and if white castles, we go knight c6, and we are perfectly safe and we're doing okay. After bishop e3, we can go simply knight a5. With the idea of knight takes b3 and bishop e6. That's what we want to do. So uh, what c takes d variation does not uh, promise any uh, advantage to white. Well, one of the ambitious variations is bishop g5, and the way I would recommend to play after bishop g5 is simply knight e4. This is temporary pawn sacrifice because white should play here c takes d. Well, not knight takes d5, which is, this is a real bad move, knight takes d5, because we play knight takes g5, knight takes g5, and play pawn to e6, and you see now both white knights hang, and white is in real trouble. So after knight e4, white should play c takes d, and of course we can take knight takes c3, b takes c, and queen takes d5, which is also playable position, but I would recommend knight takes to g5 in this position, knight takes to g5, knight takes to g5, and simply castling, and uh, position is good for black, because after bishop c4, um, well, actually, black can even go e5 in this position. So most black wants to go e5 at some point. So white should go knight f3 voluntarily. And then after bishop g4 and bishop e2, black can go even queen b6. And later on, black will play simply bishop takes f3, followed by taking pawn on d4 with a queen or with a bishop. This position is perfectly safe for um, black. Now, what else can white play here? Now, if white plays bishop e2 move, well, of course, by playing simple move like bishop e2, you cannot count on any advantage for white. So black goes knight c6, after, the, after d5, uh, bishop e2, black goes castling, 
white castles, knight c6, and uh, white has no advantage at all. If white goes h3 to prevent bishop g4, you can simply play bishop to e6. And after c5, go knight to e4. You see, now black has very active position. And some move like bishop e3, you can even play knight takes to c5, d takes c, and d4, getting your piece back and getting superior positions. Now, if you, you can tell easily that black's bishops are a lot more active than white's bishops. Black has dominating knight on d4, and c5 pawn will need some attention. So black is doing real well here. So white cannot just to play 100% passively because then they will have even disadvantage in position. So in this position, after d5, we covered bishop g5 move, we covered cd move. And there is a queen b3 move also the attacking the d5 pawn. We can simply play d takes c. This is the easy way to play. Bishop takes c4. We can simply castle. And after knight e5, go e6. And if white plays bishop e3, then we play simply knight c6. Knight takes c6, b takes c. Black is doing very fine. Castle knight d5, and they have good knight on d5. Then they can play a later either bishop d7, rook b8, or maybe even queen b6 and bishop a6, followed by that. Black definitely has no problems, maybe even better than that. Maybe black has a little better position. They also can play knight b6. Notice, and after bishop e2, bishop to b7. And they have very good position here. So this position is very satisfactory. So white does not have an advantage if in the position, in the opening position, white plays after c4, c5, knight c3, knight f6, uh, knight f3, g6, they play e3. And after bishop g7, d4, you take c takes d, e takes d, go d5, and you guaranteed stable and uh, the stable and good position without any problems in the opening. That will conclude uh, coverage of this part of. Uh, coverage of uh, the English defense, how to play. That's another way to play against English defense. We already mentioned on c4 you can play e5, but if you will play on c4, c5, I would say it's a lot more competitive way, and I would recommend to play like this. The opening we're going to discuss now is very popular. It's, it's a lot more popular than it deserves to be. Uh, it's very popular for one reason only. You hardly have to study any theory. You have, you know, one or two ideas, and you are ready to play. So opening I'm talking about is a London system. D4, knight f6. Knight f3. Now, I'm talking about e6 players here. If we play, notice, you don't know after move knight f3, you don't know what opening white is intending to play. Because when you go e6, you have to be prepared for c4, and then we're going to go bishop b4 check. And we're going to play either Nimzo Indian or we're going to play against Bogo Indian. So when white did not, knight f3 is not an indication of any certain opening. So you go e6, and this way you prepared 
for anything white can do. And here, white plays bishop f4, and what's the idea behind bishop f4 move? White delays c4 and tries quickly to finish developing, avoiding contact in the center, and this is the way, again, to avoid some modern theoretical variations. But anytime you do that, you gave up the right, you gave up the, uh, some advantage, so you cannot get an advantage anymore. So what you do after bishop f4 here with black, we can go c5. Now if we go c5, the normal move for white is to play e3 or c3. That's what they want to do. They want to play c3, e3, quickly develop the light square bishop and castle. After c5, e3, I would recommend for black to play b6, and here goes white's development. Bishop d3, bishop b7, knight d2, bishop e7, and they play c3. This is typical position for London system. Bishop can be on d3 on, or on e2. Black plays c takes d. Now, what should white do here? White can play c takes d or the e takes d. Now, if white takes c takes d, black can simply play knight c6 or maybe even bishop a6 exchanging this bishop. If black simply plays knight c6, position is totally equal. e4 is not good, I have to point to you, because after knight b4, bishop b1, and bishop a6, white may start experiencing uh, certain problems. So, the um, continuation, only continuation, where white can try to justify uh, their move order, uh, their, their bishop f4 move, is by playing e takes d. And it looks like white has very promising position. They can castle, they can put the rook on e1, they have open file, and uh, little uh, superiority in the center. It's not exactly so. Now, c takes d, e takes d, we just castle with black, white castles, and we go d6. Notice we don't want to play d5 because we don't want to lock our the light square bishop. So we play d6, and after queen e2, we play knight b to d7. After h3, we play knight b to d7 because we don't want to play knight c6 blocking our light square bishop again. Knight b to d7, h3, rook to e8, it's a slow development here. Knight to e4, and after knight, well, the other way white could have played, they could have played a4. Now, a4 contains some positional idea. White wants to go a5 and a6. After a5, if black takes, they may go knight b3 and take on a5 with a knight, uh, getting uh, a better uh, pawn structure. However, under a4, which can go a6, and it's still no big, there is no plan for white that can promise them any advantage. Bishop, uh, rook e1, bishop f8, any time white goes knight e4, we can simply take on e4, bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, queen takes e4, and here is some very important point in a modern in the strategy here. You see all black white spawn are on black, dark squares. So when we go knight f6 and after queen d3 we go knight d5 attacking the bishop and then we can go simply queen d7 and we want to play b5. Now you see knight on f3 is restricted, bishop on g3 has no future, and black goes b5 next move and having very good position. If white goes c4, black can simply go knight b4. And after queen b3, a5, 
having good position. Again, black's pieces have outposts. Bishop on a fate has a very good future. Bishop can play, what black can play g6 and bishop g7. That's, well, that's how we get better minor pieces, more active minor pieces. Now, this position, suppose white does not play a4, and if we go back in the position that we just had, if, if white doesn't go to a4, if they go simply, it's simply knight e4, what should we do here? A knight e4, we can do the same thing. We have the same plan. There is no reason why we should do anything different. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And here we go knight f6. Pawn is on a7 still. Knight f6. And after queen e2 or queen d3, we go a6. And we have the same plan, b5. And if white goes a4, you see the similarity with the previous variation. We go knight d5, bishop g3, queen d7. Again, we want to go b5. We get almost identical position with a clear plan for black and no future for white. White has absolutely no advantage here. So black has done well. Black solved all the opening problems. The opening we want to discuss now is uh, Sokolsky opening, which stands for uh, uh, International Master Alexei Sokolsky that was uh, in former Soviet Union that developed this opening, or as they call here orangutan, which is B4 first move. It definitely belongs to the category of unusual openings, and the idea of this opening is to uh, discourage Black's Knight in some positions to go to c6, quickly develop Bishop on b2, and get some kind of a pawn structure superiority. That's not the opening that can be recommended, because this opening violates basic principles of chess. Basic principles of chess say that you have to develop your minor pieces quick. Well, then you can say, well, the white develops the bishop. But you have to conduct all your actions towards the center. And you have to develop pieces towards the center. And pawns also in the center. This move contradicts with this idea. So there are a number of ways to play, a lot of ways to play, and almost here, here is almost no wrong way to play for um, black. Well, I can only recommend one way to play. Well, if you have some other preferred way to play, be my guest and you can use that, but easiest way to play against this opening is to go e5, and after bishop b2, not to go f6, like theory recommends, or d6, but simply, the simplest way, bishop takes b4, bishop takes e5, and now we get the position where we took the wing pawn on b4, and we gave the central pawn on e5, but why we did we do that? Okay, we developed the bishop from f8 to b4. That's developed piece. White took with the bishop central pawn of ours, but bishop was already developed. Bishop on e5 cannot stand long there, so it will have to move again. So that means white will be making three moves with the same piece in the opening. Black will have uh, development, superiority in development. Well, bl black played, white played bishop to ac5, knight f6. Black develops its pieces quickly. e3, we castle quickly, and after knight f3, rook e8. You see, black 
is ahead in development. After rook e8, bishop e2, and we play d5. We will kick the bishop on e5 much later with knight c6 move. Uh, after d5, if white castles, and notice that they can also play c4, try to get, try to exchange those pawns and get more superiority in a, uh, of uh, the pawn, in their pawn structure, like more central pawns. But after c4, we simply take on c4, and when bishop takes c4, uh, we can go knight c6, and on bishop b2, bishop e6. And uh, on bishop takes e6, rook takes e6. You see that black is fully developed. Black is fully developed, and... Uh, if white castles, I don't know, maybe can black go queen d3, or maybe they can go queen d7 and rook e8. Black has beautiful position here. Uh, so if white does not play c4, but they try, however, to finish development by castling, so what I would recommend here to go c5, and after c4, knight c6 and under after bishop b2 d4 you see black has definite pressure in the center they are threatening to play d3 and well the bishop on c8 of course and black has clearly better position that's an easy way to play for black so what you do again let's give you let, uh, let's get quick outline in this opening. So what we do is, after b4, e5, bishop b2, and I have to point to you that bishop b2 must be played. Some move like a3 if white plays. We can simply go d5 and after bishop b2, bishop d6. We just have a center and it's very unclear what pawns on a3 and b4 doing. So if white plays bishop, after bishop takes b4, bishop takes e5, we, all we have to know is to develop our pieces quick. Knight f6, e3, castle, knight f3, rook e8. Next what we do, we go d5, and we have, we want to uh, put the pawn on c5 because we have to have some con before we play knight c6 we don't want to play knight c6 and block the pawn on c7 then we go c5 and then we go knight c6 now we are beautifully developed and we are ready for the action in the center all our pieces stand very well that's all you need to know if someone plays you Sokolsky opening or Rangutang opening. Just remember, quickly develop your pieces and uh, uh, get, the, get your pawn, uh, central pawns ready for action in the center. You're missing the E pawn. That's not your disadvantage. Turn it. You can turn it to your advantage by having open file, open E file and putting the rook there. That's very simple to play for black and you're guaranteed to get very good position. Developed by an uh, English chess player, um, Trampovsky attack, d4, knight f6, bishop g5, has to be taken, open, this opening has to be taken very, very seriously. Now, this opening has some very sound positional ideas. So black has many different ways to play here, but they have to be very careful because there are some traps, some positional traps, so as, my, as, uh, as well as tactical ones. So we have to be very careful the way we play against it. So the variation I would recommend, and again, I'm telling you there are a lot of different ways to play for black and most uh, popular movement, knight e4, it does not mean it's the best move in this position. Variation I recommend is simply c5. Now after c5, uh, black 
white, white has to uh, make choice. They have three moves here, knight c3, d5, and bishop takes on f6. Well, let's look at them um, in this order, knight c3. That's not the best move in this position. Actually, I don't even like this move. I think any time one side develops queen in early stage and next move after that, they have to move this queen again, queen h4, this position is not the position that can be recommended uh, for um, white. So we play cd, queen takes d4, knight c6, and now white played queen h4. Queen a5 is the move I would recommend. An obvious response to this will be castling long. Then I want to play d6, and if white plays e4, notice that those are all very natural moves. Bishop to e6. And uh, all of a sudden, black has this aim on white, white's king side. So what should white play here? One of the possible ways is bishop takes f6, followed by king b1. G takes f, king b1. Now what can black do here? I think black has very nice position here. I would say black can play here simply f5 or bishop g7. Bishop g7 is a good idea. They want to play f5 next or f5 right away. But do not, after e takes f, do not take with the bishop because of rook d5 move. So black has great position after queen takes f5. And if white plays bishop d3 or knight f3, next move you go queen g4. And we exchange queens. We have very good pawn structure, superiority in the center, and we have two bishops. Black has little but stable advantage here. This is the way to play against, I would say, second grade move, um, bad move, I would say, knight c3. But this is part of a theory too. They say that there is no knight c3. There are some players that do play knight c3 in that position. D4, knight f6, bishop g5, c5, knight c3, that is. And after cd, if white plays bishop takes f6 first, we can simply capture g takes f, queen takes d4, knight c6, with approximately same type of position. So that's, that's enough with knight c3 move. And now let's move on with moves that make a lot more sense. There is a bishop takes f6 or d5. Let's start with d5. After d5, I would recommend knight to e4. And white has to move the bishop. Moving bishop to h4 is not such a great idea because, um, first of all, Black can go queen b6, and after queen c1, queen b4 check may be a little dangerous for them on c3. Notice that black can play simply knight takes c3, followed by queen takes h4. But if you don't want to do it because white may get some compensation after queen takes h4, knight f3, we made too many queen moves. But the main reason why bishop h4 move is not that great because we can simply go g5 and after bishop g3, bishop g7. Black has a very active position. Black is doing real well here. So the main move is bishop f4 and now we go queen b6 attacking the b2 pawn. Well, this is the queen c1 is the most appropriate way to defend uh, the b2 pawn. But then black plays c4. That's 
instant equalizing at least move c4 attacking the f2 pawn threatening queen takes f2 so white goes e3 and now black goes queen a5 check and uh, white has two moves either knight to d2 or knight to c3 the better move is knight to c3 because I think after knight d2, uh, black has an advantage. After knight d2, we don't want to take queen takes d5 because white plays bishop takes c4. Even then, black is doing okay by playing queen takes to d2. But what we want to do really, or to play on knight d2, is c3 move. c3 white cannot play knight takes e4 because of c takes b discovered check and the white loses so and if white plays b takes c then after queen takes d5 uh yeah black made two moves with a queen in the early stage of the game but white has no the advantage in development. The reason white made two pawn, two moves with a pawn move d4 with a d pawn d4 and d5. White has broken pawn structure c3 and c2 pawns, and uh, white also made queen c1 absolutely passive move. Black has a lot better pawn structure. They will quickly. Um, uh, equalize development and they will have superior position due to the pawn structure. Black is better here. Now the other move, the best move, as I mentioned after queen a5 check is knight c3 and white is gonna play knight takes c3, queen d2 for black, for uh, black is gonna play knight takes c3, queen d2 for white, Queen takes d5, queen takes c3, and black develops knight to c6, and position is absolutely equal. Now white can go knight f3, followed by bishop takes c4, or maybe play queen takes c4 right away. Black can even exchange on c4, and then play e6, followed by d5. White has absolutely no advantage. Even g6 followed by bishop g7. Uh, completely satisfactory for black. White will get no advantage here. So move left to cover is bishop takes f6. And in this position, natural move is g takes f. But I would want to play e takes f. Even though we do capture away from center, and not towards the center that uh, the rule says you should capture towards the center. But we open our bishop quickly and we open the e-file in case we need later. So what moves can be played here? There are a couple of moves. One of them is knight c3 and the other one, of the, the other one is, is um, e3. Now let's look at e3 move. Well, e3 was played in one game, and I want to quote you this game. It's actually very interesting the way the game developed. Queen b6, b3, d5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e2, bishop e6. And if white castles, rook to d8. And... Uh, Black has absolutely no problem. White plays knight c3. Now they're trying to do knight a4 and knight takes c5. So after knight c3, we go queen a5. And after knight a4, now white wants to get an advantage. If white plays d takes c, bishop takes c5, knight takes c5, and queen takes c5, now white has an advantage because only compensation for a weak pawn on d5, we would have had our dark square bishop that would have controlled the, this diagonal h2b8 and also possibly 
would have pl uh, placed on c5, neutralized d4 square. But if our dark square bishop is gone, we are worse here. So white has positional threat of playing knight takes c5. So correct move is c4, and in the game was queen e1, and now bishop b4, and after c3, bishop a3. Just to tell you here, just to show you that now black is threatening to play b5, and white has big problems. Game continued, bishop d1. The reason um, uh, white played bishop d1, that's defense against the b5 move, so forth. So after b5, they went knight c5, and you see now if bishop takes c5, d takes c, c takes b doesn't do anything because bishop takes b3, and um, otherwise what white wants to do in this position, after knight c5, if, white, if black does not play bishop takes c5, they want to go b4, and knight on c5 stands well. But now, after b5 and knight c5, bishop b2, and after knight b7, queen takes c3. This is just an interesting position. Knight takes d8, king takes d8, and the queen takes c3, bishop takes c3, and after rook c1, bishop b2, and after rook b1, pawn to c3. You see, black is an exchange down, but they have, but they have very, very strong pawn on c3. Possibility of playing bishop f5, knight b4. Black went on to win the game. That's very instructive game, actually. So, going back to the position where um, white could have played knight c3. Actually, knight c3 is the only way where white can still try to get some advantage in this opening. So again, d4, knight f6, bishop g5, c5, bishop takes f6, ef, and knight to c3. Now, after knight to c3, we have to be very careful and we have to be very precise the way we play. We go d5. Now obviously on d takes c, we can go d4 and then capture on c5. Even if white plays knight e4, we can go knight c6 or even maybe bishop f5 and uh, uh, white has absolutely nothing. So d takes c is not good for white. So they go e3. Now we go bishop e6, knight f3, and one of the possible moves is c4, and the other one is knight c6. Now, what can we say about this position? Um, if we go knight c6 here, bishop e2, or we can go, for example, bishop e7, castle and castle. Why black does have white does have superiority in a pawn structure. But notice that black has space. Black has more space. Black has two bishops. And black has potential to go f5, f4. And they have queen b6, rook c8, and a and e and c files open. Black is not worse in this position at all. In fact, I would rather play this type of this, this structure position, I would rather play for black than for white. Black can go knight e5, knight c4. There is a lot more dynamics in black's position than, it's in, than in white's. So I would say maybe objectively position is equal. I would rather play for black and I would recommend you to play the same way. So that will conclude our coverage of Trampowski attack. Very frequently, 
what we see in our tournament games, if you are a player from like 1400 or even 1300 to 22, 2300, and you probably are if you are watching uh, uh, this DVD, then you will agree with me that frequently your opponent tries to play opening less known just for several reasons. One of the several reasons. First, either confuse you. Second reason, maybe not to confuse himself. Third, just to get through the opening and also he may be in love with this opening. And this opening may not be one on the list of one of the you know, most important openings and popular openings, but something he may like to play and something he doesn't have to uh, uh, learn a lot of theory for playing. So one of these kind of openings is d4, knight f6, is um, bishop g5 move. What I would recommend is e6. Now, I rec the e6 is not a better move than knight e4 and then c5 or d5, but I can only recommend one of the continuations, and I think e6 is one, if not the best, one of them, one of the best. Now, white goes e6, black goes e6, and suppose white goes knight f3 or knight c3, white can play any of these moves, what we're trying to do is we're trying to play h we, we want to play h6 next move and knight f3 we go h6 now here white's dilemma number one um, they can take the bishop uh, the, the, the knight in which case they get very strong pawn center take the knight followed by e4 next or play simply bishop h4. Now, if white plays bishop h4, the simplest way to play for black, I would recommend is g5, bishop g3, knight h5. Now you see, now we're gonna get white's dark square bishop. If they play bishop e5, we're gonna go simply f6, which is gonna transpose, but after e3, we play knight takes g3, that will happen the same if white played e4. It wouldn't make any difference. e3 or e4, knight takes g3, hg, and then black develops the bishop on g7, plays d6, knight to d7, and maybe even b6 and bishop to b7. Black has very easy game. Weakness on a king side, h6 and g5, is hardly relevant at all because black is going to play queen e7 and black can wait which way to castle. If white castles king side just as a plan. I'm showing you the plan here because move order is not that important. Position closed and everybody plays on his half of the board. So then one interesting plan is to castle queen side it's a dangerous plan because white can always go a4, a5. And the other plan, which I like better, is castling short and then possibly playing rook e1 and f5 or maybe even e5 in some cases. When you play e5, you should be concerned a little bit with the weakness of light squares here. But this is the plan. Now, if you play rook e1 and f5, I think you simply have an advantage because you have to notice bishop on b7, bishop on g7, and knight on d7. You have very good minor pieces. You have two bishops, and eventually when you open the position, it may pay off. So this is the simple way to play for uh, black if white retreats the bishop. You don't see much. Uh, you can hardly see a uh, good player playing in this position, uh, 
playing bishop h4. What they do, they play bishop takes to f6. Now after queen takes f6, white can play e4, and this is the good right way to play for white. They have a pawn center, and they have some possible uh, way for, cre for getting some advantage. So what should, uh, after e4, black do? Black goes d d6, knight c3, and g6. Now this is a very promising plan for black. If white goes queen d2, we go bishop to g7, and white may castle king side, uh, the queen side. Notice that if white castles king side, they will never get anything. They hardly get anything even after castling queen side. Now after uh, bishop g7, white castle, black goes a6. Now the reason, purpose of this move, to stop possible knight b5, or after knight c6 to stop possible bishop b5. a6 is good move, queen e3. Now, what would we do, what will we do if white goes e5 at some point? We simply play queen to e7. After queen to e7, we later on gonna develop knight to d7 and put pressure on e5 pawn. So, white prepares for e5 anyway, queen e3, we go knight d7, and this is, I'm quoting you one of the games between two grandmasters. White played h4, and black played b5. Now, notice that black doesn't want to castle yet, because they, they don't want, they are afraid to maybe get, get under a strong attack after g4. So what black does, black continues development, bishop b7, and saying maybe they will castle queenside. So after, uh, after h4, b5, h4, b5 will play. So they want to play bishop b7. Now rook e1, bishop b7, and here white played e5. Black goes queen e7, and here if white plays ed, then black goes cd and black has great position, both bishops are open. So what white did, white goes h5, and after g5, they play e takes d. It's a good player's play for both sides, c takes d and now d5. Now notice, why white played h5 before they went d5? The reason why, now, if black tries to close position with e5, then you see the f5 square becomes weak after bishop d3 or bishop f5, and possibly later after g4, black's dark square, beca dark square bishop becomes very bad, and white dominates central light squares. So, however, wh white's strategy fails, to knight to e5. Now, of course, black is not giving away light squares. Knight to d4, black castles, d takes e, f takes e, and white goes f3. Now, this position is clearly better for black. Black has big advantage. Now, you see you have very powerful bishop on g7, bishop on b7, and knight dominating on e5. Black is totally winning. Rook a c8, and what happened in the game actually, bishop e2, uh, and black should have played simply b4. Black went wrong and eventually they lost game, but that's where we can stop. After b4, knight, e4, and queen, c7, we can see black is obviously having big advantage. You see, knight takes e6 is not possible because of queen takes c2 checkmate. So that's, uh, that's the indirect way, in way to protecting the pawn. And then 
black king go bishop d5 later, they have absolutely dominating position in the center. So black went on losing game, but they had very good position. This is actually a typical way you can play against this opening.